The first ever draft in wrestling television history attempting to completely revamp the WWF product going forward starting tonight with the company looking to create the ideal scenario of in-house competition between its two top brands, to potentially significantly increase total revenue with two A crews on the road and an extra pay-per-view a month, on a show that perhaps outside of the final Nitro taking place almost exactly a year to the day on March 26, 2001 with the famous McMahon simulcast promo, said to have as many long-term repercussions for the future of the company as any other in history, with Raw coming after its highest-rated show in seven months for the post-WrestleMania show last Monday, looking to maintain and build on the strong numbers of the past week on both Raw and SmackDown with the added intrigue of the first-time-ever concept that would see Vince McMahon and Ric Flair each picking 10 performers over the next two hours. After winning the coin toss to have the first pick last Monday, Vince McMahon was out first to make the top draft pick 13 minutes into Raw, choosing Rock to make him the first draft pick in history and an exclusive SmackDown performer, with Rock the expected number one choice under any realistic circumstance with him the biggest star in the industry along with being the youngest out of any of the top headliners, with him besides being the most well-known wrestler worldwide having a potential Hollywood blockbuster in The Scorpion King about to come out in less than a month that will take his mainstream stock to the next level, with Rock coming out to respond to McMahon's new rules on SmackDown while taking him off the Raw brand in his promoted last appearance on the show for the foreseeable future, responding to McMahon's claim about making Hogan and Rock with Vince opening the feud with Hogan in a backstage segment last Thursday saying that the people are what made them while going through some of his greatest Raw moments including winning the WWF title and forming the Rock and Sock connection in a rare mention of Mick Foley on WWF television. And with the show taking place in Penn State University Rock brought up the famous Penn State college football chant to create another memorable Raw moment leading both sides of the crowd in a chant against McMahon with Raw after seeing a significant increase of viewers per home on the night, seeing the second quarter minutes after the first draft pick with the Rock McMahon segment jumping over 1.2 million viewers to a 5.4 rating with over 7.3 million viewers, a massive viewership total above most of the peak segments on Raw over the past eight months already by 9.30 p.m signaling on the broadcast tracking to be at record levels with the quarter also seeing Ric Flair's first pick of the night to make Undertaker the first choice for Raw, playing off the angle of Vince ensuring Taker that Flair would not want him under his brand due to their recent history, followed by Taker going to get answers from McMahon along with Kurt Angle complaining about not being Vince's first choice with one of the most talked about aspects of the draft being the legit placement of the top names and the political maneuvering of who gets picked first over the other to signal of who is perceived to have the highest status in the top tier, including Vince McMahon clarifying the situation in a talent meeting prior to Raw going on the air on Monday afternoon telling the roster that the order of the draft is going to be storyline based with no reflection on their standing in the company's hierarchy attempting to prevent any potential locker room unrest with the company instead of facing the issue finding a way to work around it by not including Triple H and Jericho with them wrestling for the title later tonight, along with the biggest omission with Steve Austin not included in the selection under the storyline reason of him having a clause in his contract that makes him not eligible to be drafted with Austin who's not seen since WrestleMania last Sunday after walking out unannounced on both Raw and SmackDown still in a creative dispute with management over his positioning on the TV product over the past two months, with the company coming up with the contract clause reason to take Austin out of the draft with Rock picked at number one ahead of him, not escalating the situation by giving Austin second billing with him as far back as the brand split idea came up scheduled to be the top guy on one brand while Rock headlines the other setting up the big decision segment for Austin over the next week of television with both Vince and Flair fighting for his signing. With the company hopeful to see his return by next Monday at the latest with him also advertised for two house shows during the week in matches against Taker. With Vince and Flair's next choices seeing Vince picking Kurt Angle followed by the returning Chris Benoit, 
set for a mid-May return with him reportedly starting in ring training at the company's HWA developmental territory by next Monday, while Flair picked the three members of the NWO followed by Kane, and with the big surprise in the draft so far being that Hulk Hogan was still not selected after six picks for both brands. Vince picked Hogan next to further load up the SmackDown brand with most of the company's biggest TV draws all set to be exclusive on Thursday, with Raw's first tower viewership jumping huge with boosted curiosity from the draft concept, averaging over 6.9 million viewers in the most watched 9 to 10 p.m. hour in eight months and one of the biggest first towers since Raw's move to TNN from the USA Network in September 2000. With Rock and Hogan now both set to be exclusive to the SmackDown brand as the two top babyfaces on network television, one of the main issues brought up by Vince McMahon when plans for the split started being the conflict of explaining to TNN and UPN why major stars were picked to exclusively appear on either Monday or Thursday and not on both programs to maximize viewership. As with Rock and Hogan the two biggest mainstream stars in history and the focus of WWF television over the last two months the decision was made to draft them to the network television show with SmackDown having the wider reach as the usually most watched WWF TV program of the week, and while both networks are owned by the same company under Viacom. Both channels have different management teams which would see TNN having to face the situation while also almost guaranteeing Steve Austin being the top guy on the Raw brand with Rock Hogan and McMahon all on the other show, as Raw after the huge first hour continuing with the loaded show having Rock and Hogan's promoted last match on Raw in another big tag match against the NWO, this time facing all three members of the original Wolf Pack with Hall Nash and Waltman going five minutes to open Raw's second hour to jump over 600,000 viewers to a 5.7 rating with around 8 million viewers, the peak quarter of the night and the most watched full quarter hour on a Raw broadcast since Rock's return after four months on July 30th, as the match which was rumored to headline the Backlash pay-per-view with Austin on Rock and Hogan's side before his latest dispute with the company saving a clear finish with Kane interfering for the DQ to stand in the ring with Hogan and Rock as Austin's potential replacement. With the crossover between the brands set to end this Thursday on SmackDown in the final show with the full roster and the last opportunity for the company to blow off any crossover feuds before the first exclusive show starting with Raw next Monday. With the company attempting to make the two brands as different as possible under the circumstances with the same creative team still set to ride both programs, the company is planning separate divisions to be exclusive to a show with the hardcore division set for Raw and a new cruiserweight division set to be built on SmackDown, to go along with a major marketing campaign advertising the split with Raw starting next week set to get a visual makeover with a new set show graphics and opening song to signal on the new era. With tonight the final show under the classic Raw is War set up in a night that can be called the official end of the Attitude Era to close the chapter on the peak period that will likely never be topped in the history of the industry before starting with the new revamped direction of the company's brand extension. And after the big peak for the Rock Hogan NWO match Raw held steady around the 5.5 rating range for the rest of the hour for the continuation of the draft with Flair and McMahon picking the second half of their top 10 choices, including for the first time in their careers splitting the Dudleys with Bubba going to Raw and Diva to SmackDown to start single runs, while hyping the new potential future top player and Brock Lesnar right after another showcase of his power with him taking out Rikishi in the ring with Vince attempting to pick Lesnar out of order before Flair countered to take him to Raw, 
with Raw's second hour viewership jumping huge perhaps beyond the most optimistic expectations, as while the show and the draft idea was heavily hyped throughout the week with the already big post-WrestleMania audience watching WWF television in the past seven days, the 10 to 11.06 p.m. hour on the night spiked to over 7.7 million viewers making it not only Raw's most watched hour in eight months but the second most watched overall hour in TNN history only behind the over 8 million viewers for the second hour on Rock's return night on July 30th, with Kurt Angle in his promoted last match on Raw facing Van Damme next in an attempt to win the IC title for the SmackDown brand after Vince and Flair picked the title holders including a surprise in the top 10 with Vince picking hardcore champion Maven in the high-profile spot on the live broadcast as opposed to the continuation of the rest of the draft set to take place right after Raw goes off the air on the company website. With the industry still reflecting on the all-time iconic Rock vs Hogan match from WrestleMania 8 days later, one of the main people directly impacted by the match commented on the WWF title situation in an interview on the company website with Triple H responding to the questionable match placement at the event after the underwhelming reaction to his title match with Jericho with Hunter who reportedly heavily pushed for the match to go on last after being overshadowed throughout the build-up with all the pay-per-view advertising focused on Hogan vs Rock, pretending to begrudgingly accept the title match going last despite the reaction for the tradition of the business, saying that he would not have minded the Rock Hogan match to go last but it would not be fair to any person who held the title before them with Jericho on the other hand accepting the reality of the situation with him reportedly pitching for the title match to be placed second from the top, with the rematch tonight placed in the TV main event with the added factor of the Stephanie stipulation seeing the entrances taking place at 10.50pm to go 8 minutes crossing past the top of the hour, seeing the match picking up the final quarter to a 5.6 rating around the show average before an unexpected spike during the final minutes during the six-minute overrun, as the finish of the match which saw Hunter pinning Stephanie to retain the title jumping over 900,000 viewers to an unexplainably high peak 6.3 rating with a huge figure of around 8.5 million viewers, making it the most watched peak segment on Raw since the record setting 9.2 million viewers for Rock's return segment on July 30th to close the show and at the same time start the new brand extension era with massive momentum. As Raw overall with the heavily hyped draft proving to be a big drawing concept spiking huge to 5.4 rating with a near TNN record viewership of over 7.3 million viewers making it the fourth most watched broadcast in the network's 19-year history and the most watched Raw overall in eight months.